Hey everyone, I'm Michael. And I'm Chris. And we are MK Experience, and today we are gonna talk about the newest addition to the MK Experience, and that is our golf cart, why we chose a golf cart, how does it fit the toy hauler, what all comes with a golf cart. Stay tuned, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this episode. All right, we wanna thank you guys for tuning in with us today. We're gonna to take you guys through our process of purchasing a golf cart. What all were we thinking? How did we come to the conclusion to, to get a golf cart? And then just walk you through the steps of that because we tried to find uh, videos out there of other RVers who went through this process of purchasing a golf cart. Um, we didn't know too much about it. I mean, we, we, we learned that there are are different types. There's Easy Go, there's Club Car, Yamaha. It's like buying a car, you know. Uh, how do you know which one's the best? And there's, there's so many options. Um, but for us, because of the kind of fifth wheel that we have, we have the Riverstone Legacy 39 FKTH, and it's the best way to put it, it's like a hybrid toy hauler. So we don't have as big of space in the back as a true toy hauler, as I would call it. So that kind of limits us in what we can get. So what were our options we were looking at? Well, first he wanted a motorcycle. And, wah, wah. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I put the kibosh on that right away. First of all, it's a lot of money. And just second of all, I have a family member who'd been in a really bad accident and just, you know, for the reasons that we would want to use it most, it just didn't seem practical anyway. Then we were looking at the Razor, the Can-Am, and of course, a golf cart. And the Razor, you know, that definitely was intriguing and we thought about that. But the problem is if we're wanting to use it in a campground, and right around most of the campgrounds don't want gasoline carts like that they want electric so and that even goes with four-wheelers you know same thing same problem gasoline engines and most RV parks uh, don't want them driving around yeah and to me the Can-Am was kind of almost in the same line as a motorcycle so for me I like the idea of a golf cart the best yeah, and I think the thing that finally pushed us over the edge to go, you know, dive in, so to speak, completely into the golf cart thing was that you could purchase a street legal golf cart. So that kind of opens up, you know, some more avenues for you, so to speak, you know. Um, we have to stay where it's 35 and under, but we can actually go out and drive around in a city, you know, if it's 25 miles an hour or 35 miles an hour. So we're getting ready to take you guys through that process with a great company that we ended up finding, uh, Gringo Buggies. They were just great to work with, and we're going to roll the film of our experience with them, and then we'll come back at the end and talk some more. So here we go. Okay, so we are here with Brian and Nikki Price, owners of Gringo Buggies, and just tell us a little bit about what you do. We are a low-speed vehicle manufacturer of street legal golf carts located here in Summerfield, North Carolina. When I say street legal golf cart manufacturer, it means frame up right here in Summerfield, North Carolina. All the wiring, frame, everything is built right here in shop, 7405 Summerfield Road. We are proud to offer our product to customers. You can ride it. Our Gringos on any road that is listed 35 
or below. Um, we love to see these locally. We have our, our buggies are in Maryland, Tennessee. We've got some Virginia Beach, um, North Carolina, South Carolina. We love um, the idea of community, having fun, family fun, whether it be on vacation, um, around local pools, neighborhoods. Yeah, it's awesome. So tell us what kind of brands you guys sell in your buggies. Well, we are branded as Gringo Buggies. We are the manufacturer. So that being said, we use a lot, utilize a lot of the club car components in the frame being all aluminum frames, best on the market in, my, in our personal opinion. But that's just the only thing that is proprietary to club car. Outside of that, everything else is Gringo Buggy. We build up from the frame up. The good news is you can have tons of color choices uh, they're all ABS bodies. Most of them are manufactured right here in North Carolina, just right up the road in Salisbury. And uh, with that being said, Nikki could probably show you a few of the color choices that we have that you can ch choose with seats or tops, bodies. It's, it's a truly custom experience. So like Brian mentioned, we are proud to buy a lot of our product here, not only um, in the United States, but in North Carolina. Uh, one of the companies that we use is Custom Golf Carts. Um, double take they offer several different body kits um, over 36 different colors in those bodies and over 81 different seat combinations so once a customer comes in we love to customize um, these carts for our customers so they come in we choose colors for bodies um, different grill options then we go to different seat combinations, seat kits. And Nikki, you're right. There's a lot of seat color combinations, but we also partner with several other manufacturing companies for golf cart seat cushions. And there's like Lazy Life, there's Majax, Mods, tons of combinations. So if you can dream it, basically we will build it. There's a lot of customization and pride and, and just determination to make sure we put out a superior product. That's why we believe that God has blessed this company because one, we're transparent and two, we try to deliver the best product on the market. And this is one of our finished products here that John's finishing up right here. It's gonna be delivered to a customer today. Again, this is all street legal, operate on any street that is 35 miles per hour or under, and that's nationwide. Yes, it does receive a regular uh, license plate, as well as, keep in mind, you can operate these in any state that you travel. So if you go on vacation, let's just say in Virginia, save your fuel, take along a gringo, enjoy your vacation and the open air and fun, and enjoy the all that comes along with the open airness of a low-speed vehicle. Uh, low-speed vehicles do have all aluminum chassis, as you can see, frames, stainless steel hardware, ABS, so it's really good for coastal areas. Marine grade vinyl, that's one of the signatures of custom golf cart supply, double take, a uh, really good company as well as Lazy Life. Integrated dash with USB charging ports, Polk, marine grade sound system and USB charging ports are just a few of the options that come with these gringo buggies. Can you explain to everybody, Brian, the insurance and licensing process? Like, what's that usually run somebody with? Sure. Most, most people that do buy these, we have a variance of insurance. It depends on your provider. It ranges from comprehensive and liability in the neighborhood of about $180 to $280 a year, depending on your insurance company and provider. And that carries your full coverage minus or your uh, collision damage. That'd be something that's optional on these as long as you don't have those financed. Most finance companies will require you to have collision. If not, we definitely recommend a liability and comprehensive. Awesome. And registering is very simple. It goes straight to the uh, DMV with the paperwork that we give you and you walk out with a plate, put it on and ride down the road and enjoy your new gringo. And lastly, uh, the question was asked, what is this? It's a low speed vehicle, 72 volt gringo hauler. It is, again, street legal, just like any other LSV. Operate on any street that's 35 miles per hour or under, and cross over higher speed roadways. But the great thing about this is it's a 72 volt truck. It's all electric, has about an 80 to 90 mile charge range, which means a long longevity on the batteries or sealed maintenance batteries. Has electric heat, two speed fan. Sorry, no air conditioning. You can go to the old two and 35, just roll the windows down and call it two windows down at 35 miles an hour. That's your air conditioning. Again, this is a, a nice vehicle that has storage up underneath the front. The rear bed does fold down for making a flat bed. Two passengers, again, fully street legal, low speed gringo hauler.
Okay, we're here with John at Gringo Buggies, and what's your title officially? Oh, uh, I'm the senior uh, mechanic here. Senior mechanic, awesome. Okay, so he's going to tell us a little bit about the frame and the nuts and bolts of the buggies. Go ahead. So we start out with the aluminum frame. It's a pop car frame, and we tear it all the way down, as you can see. And then we start from the ground up. We put aluminum polish on it, and we go from there. And then we'll add a pump quick motor and just build straight from the ground to the top. So the motor, what is there a brand name? That, that's the brand name, is a Plum Quick. Plum Quick. Yeah, it's the Plum Quick motor. They're built down in uh, Fort Mill, South Carolina. Oh, so we try okay. to stay local as possible. Same thing with our, our body parts, is um, mainly from um, Salisbury, South Carolina. Um, but yours actually is an Alpha, and they come from Mad Jacks. Ah, okay. So you got a little bit different one, but mainly we use uh, double tape parts. Okay. So is this one in particular going to have a, a lift kit? Yes, this that? one, yours has a six inch. This one's going to be a three inch. So it's going to be a little bit different, but that after the polish comes the lift. So what's the hardest part about putting these things together? The wiring, because we do all our wiring. We do a lot of custom work to the wiring and we make it user friendly. So we move on. Um, I can show you on yours. As a lot of people know, the run toe is in the back. We move it up front on your dash. So it's moved from underneath the seat to inside the dash and then also with the F and R switch usually is up underneath the seats it is now on your dash as well so we do a lot of custom wiring to it to help make it more user friendly okay and like with ours are the lights already your lights are not installed yet um, okay. we're waiting on a couple pieces as well so yours is almost complete but not fully but that's your underbody lights the rest of your lights are Hazards, your um, light bar. So we do LED lights in the turn signals and everything like that. We add light. So this is another custom option we do. We put lights in the grill. Yeah, that looks Every, sharp. Man. Everything like that. So as I said, we do a lot of custom wiring and lighting. All right, so we are here with Alex. Who? What's your official title, Alex? Well, uh, I guess. Well, I just do all the electrical work slash like shop manager. So this guy has like spaghetti wires to work <laughs> with and lots of them as he puts them together. So yeah. go ahead and explain. All right. So yeah, so this is what our, um, basically our system is, is a uh, six, eight volt batteries, all Trojans. Um, probably one of the best batteries that we recommend in the market. Um, the way we power all the, LEDs, the lights and everything is uh, we run a voltage reducer. Um, allowing it to reduce the voltage down from 48 to 12 volt and um, it runs it off the whole pack not just a single battery um, so yeah then you have your whole fuse panel underneath the dash so everything's hidden everything has their own uh, fuses on them and everything uh, your radio is powered through that uh, you have via bluetooth um, we're just, we're just waiting for one more component so we can show you the underbody lights that you got. Um, but yeah, everything's, we hand drill all these. Um, pretty much everything. So what exactly does that um, represent? This is your, your voltage, uh, your voltmeter. So it reads the voltage off the battery pack. Okay, is yeah. that something that I'll see all, all the time? When I... Yeah, yeah. As soon as your key's on, then you're, um, you'll see that. Uh, once it draws, what do you say? Uh, how long, Brian, for the voltage? It's stationary. I think it's below about 46 volts. It's time to go and start turning around and getting back to get the charge. But um, that's stationary. Obviously, it's going to use voltage as you're giving it a little uh, accelerator pedal. It will drop down because it's using energy. But the, the main concern is when you look at it, it's when it's sitting stationary. Okay. And then the speedometer that runs that runs off that all that too. Uh, speedometer's got a battery in it. A separate oh, it battery. Does. Mm -hmm. So you just when you uh, go to uh, 
change out your speedometer. Uh, it, about every four years is what we're getting out of those batteries. It's a 2032 battery, just like you get at Walmart or uh, oh, Walgreens really? or CVS. Yeah. It's kind of like a watch battery? It's exactly what it is. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So and then that's that's hooked up to the uh, lights, so it gives you some illumination. Mm -hmm. And then you have your odometer, tripometer, uh, max speed, something like that. Wow. That looks nice. I forgot about the LED light under underneath. Oh yeah. That. So as soon as you turn on the, as soon as your headlights are off, as soon as you turn on your headlights, you have your little light right there. Then your backup camera. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I forgot about that too, team. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Then of course your hazard switch right here. Okay, we are here with Nikki from Gringo Buggy's co-owner. Brian's not here today, but she's going to give us the 411 on all things buggies. <laughs> awesome. Yes, thank you, Michael. So that's the, that's the deal. I want to educate you because I want your buggy, um, your components on your buggy, to last as long as they can. So proper charging and battery maintenance are key. Also, underneath the dash here, you're going to have your USB charger points there and then Michael and Chris actually got some underbody lights so their um, power for that is underneath this dash as well and we'll get to those in just a second um, on your dash here we've got like I said your backup monitor and then you've also got your voltage meter um, this car is fully charged it's a 48 volt card you're reading for a fully ch fully charged card it's going to read around 49 51 that means that your car is fully charged and it's ready to go for the day so the headlights still on let me get it mm -hmm. headlights are on i know this is something gringo does as well we put just some extra little lights in here those are cool make like it fun that's awesome yeah. absolutely this is a great looking car here from the from the front you've got all your paperwork and stuff in here and also your underbody so we need to download that app um, I need to show you guys how to use that app as well. Um, it's gonna, if you turn that on, it's gonna actually go to the last setting, but then the app is pretty cool as well. The app allows you to, you can either change to a solid color, um, you can do strobe, you can choose. There's so many different options in there. There's some presets and there's also some things that you can choose and you can set up on your own. <laughs> So the way we recommend strapping it is hooking it and going across the frame behind the pedal box and around pulling your weight forward and then going behind the axle and pulling your weight backwards so you have two points of tension. So it, so back here John, show, show how you had it, or kind of just point to how you had it back here. So yeah, just wrap it around the axle itself and then you'll go backwards with the tension so you have two points of tension pulling it against the cart and then it just keeps it nice and tight and safe.
right, so I figured I would take you guys over to the fifth wheel and give you guys an idea of what it's like, how we stow and strap down our golf cart in the back of our toy hauler. So let's take a look. First of all, we take some ratchet straps. We've got the four uh, tie down areas here in the back. So here we want to run here and then I run it over the axle, which is what they suggested from Gringo Buggy. So I just kind of followed what they had said there around the axle too, come down and tie in there. And we take our foot section off. It has the pins right there. You can see where it disconnects from these four points. Um, and these are our light hookups, which, which we do have to disconnect and connect um, every time that we take it on and off. But this way we get in here uh, with plenty of room and you can see how much from the end of that bench to the rear of the fifth wheel. And then we take that footrest section right here and we store it on top of the, the front bench. And then I'll usually ratchet strap or bungee strap this here. And uh, we haven't had any issues with it moving around. Um, so it straps in pretty tight. I'll show you what it looks like up in the front. All right, so I'm up here in the front. I want to show you guys how we strap it in the front. It's not really rocket science. I've got the ratchet strap going behind the brake pedal and the gas pedal. Um, and then it wraps around the cart, comes down here to the tie downs and pulls it forward. So we got the forward motion in the, in the front pulling and strapping down. And then we got uh, around the axles in the back pulling it backwards, keeps it uh, very stable. Um, but for some extra precaution, we did two things. And one thing we did is we went to Harbor Freight and we purchased some semi chalks um, to put in the front of the tires. And then we went and got some child safety foam. And uh, we did all of our corners and all of our up here towards the front um, just so that it wouldn't scratch on the hood. You kind of see how close it comes there um, to the hood. So we wanted to add some extra protection with that. And that's how we have it strapped down here in the front. So hopefully you all enjoyed watching our process as we walked through all of that with Nikki and Brian at Gringo Buggies. It was awesome. It was awesome. It yeah. was, but I have to be honest. I mean, when we entered into this process, I honestly wasn't that excited at all. To me, I was thinking, you know, just buying another vehicle was going to be like buying a car and that can be pretty stressful. So I didn't realize how much fun buying a golf cart could be. And I definitely have to say that Gringo Buggies was probably probably one of the biggest reasons that it was so much fun and being able to pick a golf cart that was custom in the sense that we got to pick out you know the body style the colors the top from top to bottom we got to make this our golf cart yeah so and there's boy I mean there's it's like a car in that and, and don't get us wrong guys I mean it is an investment to buy a golf cart okay it's 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 not cheap however it is cheaper than a Can-Am and, and, you know, and getting a Goldwing or something like that. I'm talking about new now, new prices. Um, so it is an investment to get one. So you want to make sure you get, you know, you get the right one. And our chassis is built, it's a, it's a club car chassis. And then from pretty much from there on, Gringo Buggies kind of takes it from there and then makes it their own. And we chose a body style that matched our truck. We kind of wanted to do a combination of the truck and the fifth wheel. And so they said, hey, we have this alpha body style that resembles like the front end of a Ford truck. And we're like, perfect, that'd be great. So we went with black in that. And then we wanted to tie in the fifth wheel striping. So their graphic artist came and and put some swooshes on here and they put the mk logo on now that was something that we had to pay extra for but it was worth it for us because that's what we wanted to tie in and then on top of that of course going with the ford theme we had them put a ford emblem sticker on the front of our alpha body style golf cart so that was really nice and then we went with a black and graphite kind of a theme so we added a hood scoop and then we had that painted graphite um, Chris really wanted the seats. So what was something about the seats that you 
really but like. I didn't want solid colored seats, so we did contrasting with the black and the graphite, and then we got a graphite roof. So um, just, yeah, tied it all together, and it definitely feels like ours. Like there is no other golf cart out there like ours. Yeah, which which is really cool that way. And then on top of it, the only other extra thing that I can think that we added was uh, underbody lighting. That was something that, that does not come with their standard package. Um, but it's nice. I mean, it's it's one of those things, you guys have seen it. I mean, everybody has them. Um, really great. And we upgraded, did I say the rims and tires? Mm -hmm. um, we have upgraded the rims and tires as well. And the cart is lifted. Now, these are all options, you know, that, that you can choose to have or not to have. And if you're with the right dealer, which is key word right there, the right dealer, they'll walk you through. And Nikki and Brian were not high pressure anything. I mean, it was like, here's your pallet go for it you know yeah. so which was really nice um and then you know on, on top of that the pros and the cons you know now we've had it you know for a couple months and I, I can only think of really one big con and there's not really much that we can do about it and that is we we have to crawl it's like doing gymnastics you know to get in to unstrap the golf cart and that's just the nature of the beast because of the kind of toy hauler that we have so i got to climb up over and in you know go over the seats and so i got to limber up i got to stretch out you know and and get ready to get in the back you know yeah. and do it but i don't know and then we put the footrest on which was another custom thing that we ended up having them do because it was too long so well and that's one of the things that i was really having anxiety about was i wanted to know for a fact that the golf cart would fit in our toy hauler so brian actually brought a cart out from his shop brought it out to our place and drove it up into the back of our toy hauler yeah, so we could nice. actually see that it would fit and what we learned was the cart was a little too long so in order to make accommodation they were able to to have a removable back step, which it adds a step for us, as Michael yeah. was, was saying, but it 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 fits, right? It, it gives us the option to have that golf cart back there and it fits. Yeah, and we have a video we're gonna show you guys of, of what it looks like when we arrive at some place and it's strapped in and the unstrapping process and then getting it out. Um, it, it's not that hard and, and guess, we've loved having it. I mean, it's been so fun, even here where we live, we'll, we'll jump in it and go on some of the roads that are street legal here in our city. So it's, it's been really fun. And, and I think dealing with gringo buggies, you can't go wrong. And you know, I did talk to Brian and Nikki, and if you are in the market uh, for purchasing a golf cart, they'd be happy to help you and assist you. Um, and it doesn't matter if you live in a different state because they ship them out to wherever they need to go. We're gonna leave Brian and Nikki's contact information, Green Gringo Buggies, at the bottom. There'll be a link there so you guys can go check them out. Definitely please do. If you have any questions for us, reach out to us. You know, leave some comments down below. Um, and if we we don't have the answers, we'll ask Brian and Nikki if they have the answers. But if you're in the hunt and you're looking for a golf cart, we definitely recommend them. Uh, they told us they ship golf carts all over the United States. So getting it to wherever you are is not an issue. So thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, we'd be honored if you do so. And with that, we say God bless. And safe travels.